Um, so we move to the next speaker, which is uh, Mohammed Harris Reis from the uh, uh, University of uh, Virginia. Um, and while he's setting it up, so the title of uh, their paper is Memory Forensics, Memory Forensic Analysis of a Programmable Logic Controller in Industrial Control System. So it's not too far uh, away. And I'm really looking forward to your presentation, uh, uh, Harris Reis, uh, to see how you are analyzing uh, uh, the data uh, from those programmable logic uh, uh, controllers. The floor is yours. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammed Haris Raiz. Uh, I am a PhD student at Computer Science Department at Virginia Commonwealth University. And my group is Security and Forensics Engineering Lab, headed by Dr. Irfan Ahmed. And today, I am presenting a methodology to analyze the memory of a uh, programmable logic controller. So in the last talk, there was uh, a talk about acquiring the memory uh, through network. And in a previous work, uh, what uh, I did was acquiring the memory through some hardware interfaces. Uh, but uh, there was uh, a part of it was how to analyze that memory. So this work would generally talk about how to do the analysis of the memory. The PLCs are at the heart of the industrial control systems. And the memory forensics of PLCs have a lot of challenges. One is there are uh, no acquisition tools. The other thing is, even if we have the memory dump available, this brownfield deployment uh, from the last 30, 40 years, there are dozens of vendors and they have their own proprietary architectures, uh, proprietary firmware and control software. So even if we do a traditional approach of reverse engineering, uh, the control software or the firmware to find out uh, different memory artifacts and uh, different data structure definitions, it's not a scalable, that is tedious. So we are proposing a methodology to create the memory profile uh, through application layer interactions. And these application layer interactions uh, usually don't change. Why? Because PLCs are supposed to uh, control physical processes and those physical processes don't change even if the PLC vendor changes. So that was, that was the theme of our study. And we did our study on con uh, Ellen Bradley control logic 1756 L61 controller. So Ellen Bradley is a, a famous brand in PLC and this is one of their like uh, larger versions of PLC, a modular PLC. And we consider this work to be a step forward towards a generic framework where uh, we can uh, conduct the memory forensic analysis for any PLC. Now, there is one limitation in our work is that like we do require, we cannot use a suspected PLC to create a memory profile. So we do require a test PLC of similar model and an acquisition capability to uh, find out uh, to acquire the memory of uh, from that test PLC and analyze it, reprogram the PLC, acquire the memory, reprogram the PLC, and then through this loop, uh, we uh, will generate a memory profile for a particular PLC. So as I said, programmable logic controllers, they have a lot of proprietary of hardware, firmware, and control software, but uh, the architecture is usually similar and the function is also similar. So this is a PL, how a PLC a functional um, diagram would look like. We have a hardware layer uh, that is controlled through a firmware. And then on top of that is an application. Usually it is called in the CS control logic. And these uh, hardware has, it has, has input modules that are connected to sensors uh, from any physical process. And then output modules that are connected to actuators. So uh, this is how a generally a PLC look like. And in our case, we have uh, uh, <coughs> control logic 1756. So this is how it looks like. It's a modular chassis uh, with a controller, which is the brain of the chassis. And then we have a different variety of input and output, digital and analog input output modules. Then counters, because like timings is very important. PLC, they are dedicated counters. Uh, communication like ethernet communication, some other communication modules, and then the power supply unit. 
Now, let's suppose uh, you are the forensic investigator and you are given a PLC memory tab to do the analysis and there is no memory profile available that you can pass and just find out uh, different forensic artifacts. So what would be the important forensic questions in, in this regard that you, you would like to get the answers of? So I have come up with a few questions. For example, is the firmware modified or not modified in the memory dump if you can find the firmware? Are there any changes in the control logic? So you call it, this is the control logic that actually, actually steers the process or controls the process, monitors and controls the process. So are there any changes in the control logic which is available in this memory dump? If yes, what are those changes? And again, the sensors and actuators, what is their state? The state of the output pins, the state of the input pins in the memory dump. If the state, if you are able to acquire the state, are they as per the expectation of the user or there are some um, some anomalies in those? And then the famous thing, are, uh, are there any traces of an attacker if somebody attacked? Can we find some traces in the memory dump? And uh, so PLCs are controlled. Uh, when we program the PLC, we put it in program mode then, or there are some other modes like test mode and the run mode. So were there any change of mode? Because if some attacker wanted to change the program that is running on the PLC, uh, it would have changed it to the program mode or some other mode. So are, can we find some history of uh, uh, mode changes in the PLC? So these are some important questions that we would like to know in the memory dump. So how to find the answers? So one approach is just to, as I said, like reverse engineer uh, the firmware, get the firmware from the website and the or control software and reverse engineer it. But that I said it's too tedious and a lot of manual effort would be involved and it's not as scalable as well. So we propose an application layer interaction based approach and in which the first step is we do the control software analysis. We explore the control software. And the control software is the software that actually uh, where you can program the PLC, push the program to the PLC and get some feedback, the kind of monitoring the PLC as well. After exploring the control software, what we do, we create a test case, sequence of test cases, and then push uh, one by one those test cases to, and then acquire the memory. So push a test case, acquire a memory and analyze the dump. So that's kind of a loop that, that we do. But we also, uh, identify if the data structure definitions are available. For example, if you are lucky, but in most cases uh, you won't be, like there is, is source code available or the vendor is already providing some uh, documentation about the data structure definitions or you have debug symbols, et cetera. So through some documentation, you're able to find the data structure definitions. If not, what we do, we do the analysis, as I said, like acquire the memory, do the analysis, find the data structure instances. And after that, once some instances are available, you try to refine those instances and apply some heuristics, carving and list walking based uh, uh, rules to identify the data structure definitions and then verify those definitions and finally create a profile. In our case, we create a profile as a Python library and from uh, that profile can be used readily for any next uh, memory dump for the same PLC and readily extract all these kind of artifacts that we are talking about. So exploring the control software, what we do in that, there are two purposes of exploring the control software. The first is to recognize the forensically important data. As I said, like different vendors have different kind of organization of the, uh, of the PLC projects and different uh, logging information, configuration data, so, all these things can be different in different vendors' PLCs. So you just take a look at the user, like what all different kinds of information that are available uh, to be programmed for that particular PLC. And that gives an idea like what we can expect when we see a memory dump. And this uh, study also helps because uh, if we have to program the PLC and read the memory, so that it helps in configuration process as well. The aspects that we should look for is 
the project organization. So project is something that I said, like con we say it control logic, how it is organized in, in, in this particular PRC. So find out that organization, then see if we have some kind of named structures available because we have no information about how the memory is organized. So if these named structures are available and we would name them ourselves and we find them in memory, if we find them in memory, we would be able to create some kind of linking. And then there are some unique data patterns. So there are IO pins. I mean, there are some group of pins and then we can also define some logical uh, variables like uh, logical variables or it's called logical tags. So these tags, physical or logical, we can define different kinds of pattern like 1010 or whatever. And then search for those pattern in the memory dump to find out where those particular uh, structures are most likely to be residing. So this is so creating an expectation, like uh, what all we are uh, going to see in the memory dump. Then PLC configuration data, that's also important. We will take a look at it in the next slides. So the project is organized in this particular case, uh, Ellen Bradley, is in the form of uh, tasks. There are like 32 tasks in one project, and each task has up to 100 programs, and each program has multiple routines, and each routine has rungs, a lot of rungs, and each rung has instructions, like a five-layer hierarchy that's available. And we can name, except for these runs and instructions, but we can name the routines, the programs, and the tasks, which is, which is a good thing. So what we do, we program the, uh, we create a program here in RS Logics 5000, that's the engineering software or the control software for this particular PLC, and push it or download it uh, in the PLC. So this is a snapshot you see is the main task and within this is a main program and within the program there are a lot of routines and you can see like I have named some of the routines uh, as per my wish and to see them in the memory dump. Another important thing is the program tags. So these are the tags that can be used as logical input and logical outputs uh, just as we use in uh, software programming some some uh, variables, local variables kind of stuff. As I said, like uh, RS Logics 5000 allow us to name tasks, programs, or routine, or logical IO groups, and these names are also transferred to the PLC. So there are some, uh, so I realized like some of the descriptions, descriptors are not pushed to the PLC and some are, so these names are pushed to the PLC as well, and we can see them in the memory now. Unique data patterns, as I said, like IO input and output pins, we can configure and find out some kind of uh, a pattern that is easy or conspicuous to uh, find out. Like for example, in this particular case, I like set deliberately A, B, A, B, uh, hex pattern. And I know that these patterns uh, if, if it's recurring, uh, it's easy to extract out or search in the memory dump. This is how a control logic uh, program looks like. Uh, if you see, there are two routines here. And within a routine, like in this particular routine has two rungs, rung zero and rung one. And this, this routine has only one rung. And if, within a rung, there are instructions. So this is one of the instructions. It's uh, the instruction and over that instruction is a pin that is attached, like the input pin. And this input pin, the name of this input pin is tag one controller dot 14. So this 14th pin of some tag, some logical tag that I have defined myself. And that input is applied here. And this is how the control logic flow looks like. These are called branches, so it's branching and uh, different kinds of like open and closed gates and some other uh, timers, et cetera. So that's how like the control logic uh, looks like in the RS Logics 5000 software. The next thing is the configuration data. So we also want to see like what all different kind of programs we can, uh, different type of services we can program in the PLC. Like are there some ports on which PLC is listening? Uh, what are the network addresses? Like for example, IP addresses, uh, inventory available, 
what kind of logging information we are getting from the memory. So that's very important. So I, in fact, as a matter of fact, there are no logs that uh, though like uh, uh, formal logs available in uh, in the R in the RS Logics 5000. I, I inquired the vendor as well uh, about some logging information, but unfortunately, uh, not much is available. But these information, whatever is available, it helps in uh, creating an expectation. So you can see here, I mean, it's uh, it's saying like this is the IP address of of a particular PLC that is attached uh, uh, to this particular software. And important, so although logging information is not available, but you it does tell uh, the memory utilization, which is important. And there are two types of memory. One is dedicated for IO, and the other is dedicated for the data and logic. So it does tell us like uh, what is uh, like it's, the IO is around 500K and the uh, logic is around 2 MB. And it tells us like how much is currently utilized. So that's available in the control software. And it also tells us like some kind of setting about, so it has the SD card as well, which is another important forensic uh, artifact, but that's not uh, our uh, mandate right now. But it, it does tell us like if, uh, if there is a restart, should it, fetch the new the the project from the sd card or not or uh, or only on the uh, case of corrupt memory instances or user initial these are different kinds of modes for triggering the uh, uh, the backup that is available in the sd card it also tells us uh, about the information of the current user so that's not the rs logic software this one but it's part of the same suite. It's kind of, uh, it's called factory talk. It's kind of the licensing server, but it tells us like which uh, user name uh, and the machine is uh, logged into a particular PLC. So this is the uh, setup, uh, uh, hardware based setup for acquisition of memory uh, that we just reuse from our previous work. Uh, so this is uh, this is the uh, control PC through Ethernet. We push a program, and through JTAG and these debugger, we fetch the memory. Now the next step is how to come up with the test cases. Like what type of test cases we should do. So uh, I realize uh, I link those the test cases with the questions, the forensic questions that we are. Uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, do we want to get the answers for? And so the, these test cases are such that we should find out, one is we are interested in finding out the firmware. The other we are, uh, the test cases should be that we get the name, the structures. So take the name, each name structure, modify those names and identify their location. Similarly, control logic, we start with a very basic program and that contains only one run, one instruction, one input, and then we keep increasing the complexity atomically and analyze like what are the changes in the memory going on. Same with the IO data, we will, as I said, like we identified some kind of patterns in the IO pins and then try to find out. Similarly, in the configuration data, we, we try to find like uh, if we change the modes, what's happening, if we don't change, if we change the IP address, what's happening, and try to find out these locations. So name data structures, uh, I realized like there are, can be three kinds of name data structures that are available in the memory. The first is the, the data structure or the string, the named string is a complete data structure in itself. Or the string is part of a bigger data structure. And the third one is a string is part of a especially staggered linked data structure. So that's the most complex thing. Like there, it's part of some data structure that is not residing in one location and it, it has some uh, different staggered locations and they combine create one type of data structure. Like for example, the PLC name, the controller name, it's a complete data structure. You can find wherever you will find the controller name. You can set the controller name and you can search it out and you can, and that's done. The job done, that's easy. And the time zone is, it's a bigger data structure. So when you, you find a time zone, you definitely expect the time zone value as well and some other metadata 
attached to that string. So uh, there would be a bigger data structure and it would be some, this is string, whatever the time zone would be part of that particular data structure. But for the linked data structure, what I did was I applied some boundary markers. So I tried to find out with particular string that I uh, set uh, in the vicinity, what kind of boundary markers uh, are available that can qualify some for some boundary markers. And then uh, within those boundaries, are there some forward and uh, backward links available? So forward link is simple. If you can find out like there are the, some memory addresses that are available within this vicinity. And for the backward links, what we did, we in the within the memory dump, uh, we try to find out uh, that particular instance where we are right now, where that is string is available, and that particular instance where all, wherever they are called. So that's how we try to create a link between forward and backward pointers to uh, to find out uh, the linked data structure or a tree type of data structure. So these are some of the we were able to like find out around twenty two structures within the memory. Uh, some of them. Uh, are, I, I, will, I will just discuss here. So the first is assignment. I mean, these names are arbitrary. I have just given these names. So the first one, the name that I gave is assignment data structure. This is, in my opinion, is the mother data structure for all. Like every type of task, every type of uh, new structure that is being defined, it would have uh, one assignment data structure it has this kind of marker like a 0 a and uh, ending marker is the same. And it has 10 D words always. And there are some, uh, some kind of, uh, some 10 fields you can say within those, not 10, eight rather, the first and the last D words are always these, which are indicated or the, or the markers of the data structure. Then there is a, a tag a description data structure. So uh, you remember the tag or the name that we could assign. So anything we could assign a name that would have a tag description data structure. And the this tag description data structure, its its marker is like eight zero 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 zero. So x x and uh, is the and y y y y is the next d word. The first d word would be x x, and the last d word would also be this. So uh, and where x x defines the length of d words. So uh, as we know that name can be can, can have variable characters. So this is obviously the last one, the last uh, byte is flexible. And the second byte starting is also flexible. Uh, I will tell you why. So uh, yeah, but this is a uh, assignment data structure, uh, the name data structure, but its link would still be available somewhere here in assignment data structure. Similarly, program, you recall the, the program is one of the hierarchy of the control logic. And this program data structure, it's uh, it's a big data structure like 88 D words. And there are some interesting fields for, from forensic perspectives and we only explore those. Uh, but uh, obviously that it, it also has one assignment data structure for it. Then a routine data structure. This is a control logic data structure uh, that it's an interesting data structure where we are interested in. And it is again a nested uh, structure that is available. Uh, we will discuss it one by one. Then, uh, as I said, like rung, branching, instruction, and uh, memory block data structure. So this is also an interesting data structure that was available in memory that tells us exactly how much memory is utilized. So uh, uh, the control software probably just reflect, uh, maybe it's just extracting these uh, uh, values and reflecting in the control software. So if we, find these is definitions. So are we good with just uh, carving uh, these uh, 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 definitions uh, and find out the data structure instances? Uh, most cases, yes, but may not be always because uh, as we know the drawbacks of carving, uh, I also witnessed like some of the control logic that was not being used was still uh, residing in the memory. So it's a good and a bad thing both. Like if we would still like to have that thing, so you carve as well. But you cannot rely on it and say that this is the control logic that is exactly uh, being run when uh, the memory dump was taken. So it may not reflect the latest state. 
So these are some of the connecting graphs. Like if you see, uh, this is assignment data structure. Uh, uh, it is it has a pointer for the next assignment data structure. So it's a linked list type of assignment data structure. is a linked list type of data structure. It contains next assignment data structure. And of course, uh, from where pointer, where maybe some routine where it that, that has to be executed, and then the tag value. So if, for the name, what should be the uh, value for that? Uh, no, so it's for, sorry, it's for the tag, like the I open. What is the value of that? So that's the important stuff. Like what is the value of that I open? And description. What it, it, uh, if you recall, uh, we can uh, give a name to an, any tag. So what is the name that is given to a tag? So the name only we just a string searched, but that doesn't help a lot. So we have to somehow find out this thing and find out this thing, and then we will be able to uh, come up with with the with the I/O value that is available in the memory now. So this is the link list uh, of our that assignment data structure. Um, I will skip it. Uh, this is the tag description data structure where which, which says like the first D word is A0000004, which says like the four D word would be there. And within the first D word, the first byte represents the number of characters because uh, they can not be uh, like divisible by the D word of four. So, uh, and this is, uh, if it's not divisible, there would be some padding to make it to the boundary of the D word. And then the last D word is the ending marker. Uh, this is even a, a, a higher tier uh, data structure in the memory. If you see, it is also starts with assignment data structure. Then we have uh, this one is a linked list next structure. This is the routine DT. And within the routine DT, we get a pointer for the routine logic. So that's the executable code uh, that, that actually runs on the PLC. Firmware, we were able to extract the firmware. We, we got the firmware from the vendor side and we were able to extract two instances of the firmware in the memory. The first instance is at this location, the second one at this location. And firmware is also available in the SD card, but it has some padding, I don't know, probably because of some um, format that it has. Then coming over to memory utilization. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so as I said, there are two memories and each memory has two blocks. I just go over. So if you see data and log logic memory, uh, it has two blocks. This is block number one, this is block number two. The first block always start as a fixed address and you see it's a like 0008 or zeros. It's a fixed address where the memory block would start and it floats for this block, so at the end. And this is the uh, ending address for the block one. Similarly for the block two, the ending address is the fixed, but the uh, starting address would float. And if you see, if when you add it up, it's exactly matches with the what's available in the memory with the in the control software. So if the user is expecting something else, and the memory dump is saying something else, we we know that there is some problem. Same is the case with the other memory. Now uh, coming over to uh, control logic extraction, this is the example software. And this is the control logic memory dump area. And the color coding represents like uh, how we uh, uh, decipher this thing. But we, we wrote a tool and, uh, and applied all those rules that we extracted and we were able to come up with 100% exact information that's available here uh, and all the time. So we were able to extract uh, all binary instructions and all different types of instructions uh, that we program in the memory dump. This is the output of the Python. I mean, obviously it's not a very fancy looking output, but it, it, it represents all the routines, all the instructions that are available in the control logic. Uh, this is one of the algorithm to identify like how we are actually decoding, because if you recall the last instruction, it doesn't, it's just a small piece of it. It doesn't say like what's it's tag one, uh, CONT zero, controller zero. It doesn't speak of all this. So there are some ways to decipher it. It's just one uh, program. Um, so configuration data, we were able to find out the time zone, the IP address, the project name that is available right now in the memory dump, the revision number, uh, even the SD card files, the mode, SD load mode, like is it user initiated or uh, all that mode. And also an important thing, the desktop computer and the username that actually programmed the PLC last time. 
And if it changes, uh, definitely then we can we can we know that there's some problem with that. We also are able to extract some logs that were not available in the in the control software. So if you see these logs are telling us like the PLC mode was changed to run and test and to program. So somebody if changed the mode to program, then there is definitely something was going on unless it that it matches with the user and the user has it. So these PLCs are usually in bigger environment where uh, where it's expected that there are some um, SOPs are in place whenever there is some change in the program goes on. So that's logged. So if it's, it matches the log or it doesn't match the log, then it shows us that there's some anomaly. Uh, future work. So one challenge is the availability of the memory dump. So uh, this memory dump uh, from this PLC, we acquired in the, over the last work. And today uh, Zubair presented another, which, which is interesting. I would like to do and uh, apply this methodology on that uh, dump that he acquired. So we are also working to find out um, uh, a few different other vendors and try to extract their memory through hardware-based uh, methods. And then we would like to create an automated memory profile generation tool. So, I mean, we said that this works for Ellen Bradley 1756. And uh, ideally, the test cases that we generated, we did it manually. So ideally, it would be something that uh, unfortunately, PLCs don't provide APIs, but it's still like it can be some semi-automated way in which we can uh, generate a tool and find out uh, memory forensic uh, artifacts from uh, memory dump for generic PLCs. To conclude, I mean, uh, so as I said, like PLC is uh, uh, a lot of proprietary hardware, firmware, and control applications making reverse engineering not a feasible and a scalable options. So this methodology uses application layer interaction, which are always the same because physical processes are the same. And uh, we present an analysis on this PLC and uh, our code and some sample dumps and even the uh, project files of RS logics are available on GitHub for interested users. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh Harry's Reis. Um, so let's see if we have some questions in the room. Yes, we have a question here in front. Hello. Um, that was an excellent, excellent presentation. Thank you very much for elaborating. Um, I did have a question in regards to the ports uh, for that 1756 uh, stroke uh, L61 PLC. Um, could you speak a little bit more about the ports themselves, the default configuration of that PLC? You mean the physical ports or the uh, the ports that it's listening to? Yes. Uh, okay. So let me go back. So uh, I don't exactly recall uh, on which TCP port it's listening. Um, so it's. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't recall, but it's a, it's a standard port. Maybe some some other guy might be knowing it. it it's a standard uh, port, which is, uh, I don't have in mind exactly. So okay. uh, in memory dump, I did not actually uh, try to, it it did not give me enough information, frankly, in, this, in my particular case, but generally speaking, that can help because uh, as you, if you recall, this uh, is the controller and the, let me go back a little bit more. So in this particular case, it has a dedicated module. So these uh, TCP uh, connections were terminating in a dedicated modules and were not part of the controller memory. So uh, it was a setback for me, but it's still, I mean, in, in, this, is a, this is one of the biggest uh, PLCs they have. But the smaller PLCs, we expect that the same the stack, the communication stack, would also be built on the on the on, on the same controller, and we we can have uh, the traces for the port as well. So I, I don't exactly recall what's the port number of TCP. That's, that's okay. The same thing. Thank you. But 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 one more thing. Yeah. So I was expecting if it's uh, listening on SN, on SNMP or a web server. Uh, it does have a web server, by the way, but that's also terminating on the communication. So it has a, a it's listening on port 80. 
and uh, and and syslog but it doesn't have syslog or snmp thank you thank you for the um for the answer, I, I also have another question because during your presentation and you started by explaining that uh, the PLC has a, um, a task list, there's programs and the programs have routines. Um, and I was always thinking, also thinking when there's an incident uh, which involves a industrial controlling controller system. Um, if we have a PC, I would use maybe volatility to analyze the RAM memory of the PC. And in the end, I, I got the same feeling with your tool that you are analyzing the memory and you're basically also giving us um, a, a volatility analysis of the, uh, the, uh, of the, of the memory. Um, so what kind of um, scenario do you see if something happened in a, um, in, in, in a factory that involved uh, PLCs? Um, do you have a tool for people? Do you keep a data or do you intend to keep a database to store all the profiles uh, to share, uh, to facilitate and uh, maybe to support forensic analysis of a range of PLCs? Uh, so yeah, I, I have shared uh, this information uh, on GitHub. It's available. Okay. And as, as we go along for other PLCs, we, we will uh, keep sharing it on the, on the repository. But uh, volatility, I mean, it doesn't have any plugin for PLCs. So this is the memory that is extracted from PLC. And yeah. Uh, yeah, volatility, maybe, I mean, once we come up with some generic profile, we are able to add some... Uh, it was just an analogy. Volatility. Just, just yeah. an analogy for... And, and the other question would be um, um, looking for hidden programs or hidden tests. Do, do you see that capability within the PLC or this particular PLC that it would be uh, able to hide? Uh, programs that are typically not seen, so a, uh, it's like PLC malware that hides from the the normal operator view of the PLC. Oh, so uh, I'm not sure about it. If 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 it's if it has a capability, but uh, in the last paper, I mean, uh, we saw that they did some did write some code and did do some modification. Uh, even if they modify some control logic and extract it back, I think control software would still know if there is some change that has happened. But if some user changes it and rechange it, or if, and you you get a memory dump available, so memory dump would give you information exactly what what was there that that has happened. Okay. Yeah. Any questions from the chat? There weren't there any, not yet. Any more questions? Maybe in the room. And I think that's a nice time to, to quit. Thank you again uh, for your presentation.